Action. I'm Jonathan O'Toole. And I'm Robert Rudnick. And I believe that pre-born deserve the same defense as born people. So do I. Yeah. And that's our mantra at uh, Project C, whether we're in Africa or North America or anywhere we go. I try to be ready to have that on the tip of my tongue, that the pre-born persons deserve to be defended in the same parameters and in the same way that born persons deserve to be defended. So they deserve to be defended, but a lot of times when you assert that, um, the accusation comes, people accuse you, oh, you're um, advocating vigilantism. No, I'm not. I'm not. And I don't think Brother Rob is either. We are not advocating vigilantism. So we wanted to make this video to address that issue of vigilantism, of what you not. should do with your local abortionist. So we want to go through a list of examples. Obviously, we cannot make an exhaustive list, right? But we are not advocating vigilantism. Yes, okay, the people who have picked up the sword or the shotgun or the rifle and, and defended the preborn like they were worthy of defense, like a born person would hope to be defended. Yes, they're heroes. Um, I've given up a lot, you know, relatively a lot in my life of... Uh, I've sacrificed some uh, of my social standing because I've defended those people, like Paul Hill, because I've said they're heroes. I think a child can see that the preborn deserve the same defense as the born. But I also think it's important to realize that we can say that without advocating vigilantism or conspiring to commit a felony or conspiring to um, harm or terrorize anyone. It's and we can and and we're trying to model that at Project C. And myself, Jonathan O'Toole, as an individual, we're trying to model people who maintain the ethical, the consistent ethical statement that preborn persons deserve the same defense as born persons without advocating vigilantism. I agree. There are a certain number of things that a person would be tempted to do if they really believe this. And we're, we're just trying to help you be strong and not do that. So here we go, one by one, we're, Rob and I are going to take turns, and we're going to go through a list uh, of things that you should not do to your local abortionist. For instance, if you were to mer uh, acquire an abortionist, mm -hmm. uh, there are some things, you, first of all, you don't want to do that. You don't, don't want to do want, that. You don't do want not to, kidnap. That was one on our list. Yeah, don't yeah. kidnap an abortionist. Don't okay. kidnap your don't local kid, abortionist. Don't kidnap Support your local sheriff and uh -huh. don't kidnap your local abortionist. That's right. Don't right. do that. And you know, it might feel good. It might feel good. It might feel really yeah. Good. Don't yeah, do it. Really don't do it. Don't do it. It's sort of like yeah. And, and and you know, people that are inclined to do that are inclined to like uh, try to convince him to stop, and that's always almost always involves certain uh, areas, certain behaviors in the area of deterrence yeah or, uh, deterrence might be interpreted as coercive yeah you know yeah. things like that uh don't do all that stuff you know you know be first of all don't don't acquire them secondly you know don't be trying to pull out his fingernails don't be trying to uh hey let's let's go through the list okay, okay. one all by right. one yeah. and uh, individually we got it right there yeah, go, go, yeah. Give it to me. I'll so here we go yeah. here we go okay brother rob what's the first thing you don't want to do the first thing you don't want to do is Ever give your local abortionist a puppy? Okay, it's a tremendous amount of uh, commitment. No, they're not necessarily big on that. And, and it's just not necessarily a right fit. And they don't always get along with the critter. Okay, what, what's one other thing? You know, something else you never, ever want to do is uh, acquire an abortionist, okay? Do you mean kidnap? You said it. I didn't, okay? All right. And, all and right. you know, so the, the, the thing is, is that, first of all, you shouldn't do that. It's it's a major felony. Secondly, uh, you're going to be overwhelmingly uh, tempted to get into areas of uh, deterrence. Okay, okay. And, and so, you know, that's going to include things like, yanking out his fingernails or his teeth or uh and you're saying don't do these don't things. do these things don't yank out don't pull out his don't fingernails by his the roots teeth, don't pull out his nails right. you know don't acquire them in the first place all right know. 
just, you got to be strong, okay? All right. I understand it's going to feel really good. Right. You know, it's gonna, you're going to feel really good. I don't know if you've noticed this, but these these force resistance activists that they do get busted, and they all end up under the jail, okay? Yeah. That's another thing you don't yeah. want to do this. They, the Christian walk doesn't prepare you well for these kind of activities, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and But they all have this huge smile on their faces. They're being led away by federalities. You know? Nonetheless, resist no, the temptation yeah, no, 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 no. to kidnap your That's local right. abortionist. Yeah, don't do that, and, and you know, and then absolutely don't do these other things, you know, like, like, tie his limbs to four different vehicles and take off in four different directions. You know, you just don't do stuff like that. You know, you gotta be strong. You know? Yeah, you gotta leave me with some things to say. Yeah, okay, you're right. going down our list here. Yeah, okay, okay. And we're gonna have to write another list. Okay. Well, I guess we can. There really is an unlimited number of things. Unlimited, yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Another one. Okay, right. another thing you don't want to do, don't shoot an abortionist. Shoot. Uh, yeah, don't shoot an abortionist. Oh. And whatever, yeah, you know, don't do that. And especially don't, like rub the bullets in garlic, you know, so that he'll infect no. more quickly, you know. Now, what is that? Is that that's is that an a old thing? Trick. That's an old trick for the the mob in the 30s. Really? Yes. Speaking of the mob in the 30s, what we found out reading about mobsters in the 30s from the town I grew up in is that uh, they would take their shot up people to the abortionists who were working on the hookers of the day. Back okay. when it was all illegal, the guys without a license anymore and things like that, they would do that stuff. And they charge them big cash bucks, right? And they give it because they wanted to repair their buddy. Right, right. So, so you know, you know, don't, don't follow an abortionist around to see if he's patching up gangsters nowadays. Oh, you're saying not to do that? Not to do that because Why? that's stalking. And that stalking, is stalking, and stalking is a, a felony, or yeah, yeah, it's possibly at least a, a gross miss. And and so there is a, there is felony stalking with too. The abortion distortion in the courts, any of this stuff. There's great abortion distortion in the courts just for people doing very timid, nonviolent. Now, what's what's the abortion distortion? They get, they get the pass on everything. I yeah. mean, these guys they don't have licenses, you know, stuff like that, you know, and and, and they're doing it anyway. And nobody cares, and they're they're death camps haven't been. Uh, inspected in decades, you know, all kinds of. All things. right, all so, right. So, so that's the abortion. There's a distortion. lot. Of, there's a lot of dirt you can. There's a lot of muck you can rake with these people. Don't do it because it's, you know, you got an abortion distortion in the court system, and and uh, uh, you know, it'll they're likely to call it all, you know, stalking. Got another reason. Another reason not to kidnap your local abortionist. Yeah, you know, uh, or to or to like get the drop on him in his house in the wee hours, you know, because, oh. you know, they they do a lot of cash and carry business, you know, right. which they, we're sure they're not reporting. Right. And so they're going to have a big stash probably in the house, you know. Of cash. You know, of cash yeah. or whatever, right, you know, yeah. whatever they trade for that, you know, it can be yeah. anything. It can be precious metals. It could be arms. It could be drugs, you know, they could do it for a lot of different things. Sure. Uh, so so that's, that's a problem. Adrenochrome. Adrenochrome, you bet. Oh yeah, they could be harvesting the adrenochrome and keeping it in their refrigerator at the house. You know, so you know, breaking in into their house, don't you know? Don't be interrogating them to find all that stuff out. Don't break into the house to begin with, and don't be interrogating them about that stuff. You know, like you know, taking off their toes one by one. Look, we're not kidding. You know, don't do that stuff. You know, these are the things. These are the severe temptations that you have to resist. Yeah, it's a you know, very severe temptation. It's very yeah. severe temptation. We understand that. Self-control is, is a virtue. It's the key. It's the key, yeah. You just don't want to be doing So that. now we've advised people not to um, kidnap. Right. And you've advised people don't kidnap don't your local kidnap abortionists. abortionists. But and if you find that you have. If, if, you know, if you wake up and you find out that you have, you know, much like... A, a, a woman finds herself pregnant, you know. Oh, I find I I found I was pregnant. I yeah. found I was pregnant, you know. Yeah, and, you know, it just happened. It didn't, right. it didn't have anything to so do with it. I was spreading my feet for the whole neighborhood and was the girl with public privates. I happened to find myself pregnant. You know, it's the same thing with an abortion. In know? the event that, in spite of our best advice, you find yourself that you that you've broken into his house or you've kidnapped him and you're trying to find out where his stash is. You know? Yeah. Don't do it first of all, and if you do it, don't exacerbate things by interrogating him, you know, ruthlessly to find out where his stash is. Got it. Okay, Jonathan, uh, what are some other things that you definitely don't want to do when you're, if you're somebody who believes 
that that force resistance is justified well, against well, abortion. Right. If you're a Bible believing Christian and you're into reading the Bible or listening to the Bible, by the way, I recommend Alexander Scorby, King James Version audio, great uh, Shakespearean reading of the Bible, classic for all time. Love Alexander Scorby. So if you're listening to Scorby or reading your Bible, and you go through the Old Testament, you read about David, right? And in, in, in the early First Samuel, the history of King David, and you read about how um, Saul. You know, told him to go get the Philistine foreskins and a, and a bag of Philistine foreskins so he could uh, win um, the, the princess, Princess uh, Michal. Uh, Michal, Michal, the daughter of the first king of Israel, Saul. Don't get carried away. Yes, read your Bible. Yes, learn from it. Yes, enjoy the story of David. But you've got to contextualize things and recognize we live in a totally different context. First of all, no one's going to reward you. We don't have any king. Nobody's going to give you uh, his daughter. Um, for for a sack of abortionist foreskins. Second of all, um, they're already circumcised. Um, most of the abortionists are Jews, or at least probably three out of four in the United States, and so they don't have any foreskins. It's not going to work. So make a clear distinction and delineation between your uh, reading of the Bible, which is true, and the historical context that we live in now, a sack of abortionist foreskins, is going to get you nowhere. Chicks do not dig abortionist foreskins, and chicks do not dig defensive action. So my reason that I'm giving you right now not to attack an abortionist, not to kidnap him, not to shoot him, is because chicks don't dig it. Okay, first of all, we both have said, and I'm going on record, Rob went on record, don't kidnap your local abortionist. Or, ab or an abortionist outside of town, in another town. Either, even if you think you could, you'd be less likely to, uh, to get caught uh, by kidnapping an abortionist. In Who's a not in your mill you love to hate. Right, right, no. right. Nonetheless, don't do it. Categorically, don't kidnap your local or international or out-of-town abortionist. Don't mm. kidnap your abortionist, okay? But you find that you have rob was listing some of the things not to do and we think there's a i think there's a few for example that rob okay. missed please do not inject your local abortionist with battery acid okay right. yeah that would all right yeah don't tie him spread eagle mm -hmm. in the woods okay um and uh, give him the gift of a phosphorus grenade Okay. okay. Or okay. any version of these. Don't okay. don't don't be too literalist. Yeah. Uh, these are these are examples that are designed to illustrate categories of things you should not do to your local. You're either going to have you're either have to be on the dark web like crazy or have a heck of a class three license to get a phosphorus grenade anyway. It's right, just not right, worth it. Right, and not you're not <laughs> you shouldn't do it anyway. You'll lose your license for starters. You, you know, got so, it. You yeah. lose your federal firearms license. License. It's yeah, all kinds of all you know. different kinds of licenses. Uh, um, okay. And uh, let's see here. Okay, don't tie him to four vehicles or trees and pull mm -hmm. him apart okay. uh, with four different vehicles. You know, that right. would require, uh, you know, at least three other um, people. Uh, Who have to keep quiet afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. No. And if you figure out some way to do it, uh, you know, work out the mechanics so it's just you, still don't do it. Don't you do know, it. Don't do it. Just, just don't do it. These are temptations um, that you need to resist. Right. You need to resist. You really do. You <laughs> we're, we're in earnest. You really need to not do these things. Don't give him soda with crushed glass. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, okay. So we're often accused of trying to encourage people to do th these things. We are no. not doing that. No. We are telling you we should organize. Organize no. at a state level to elect a government that will empower us to, to arrest these people mm -hmm. and jail them mm -hmm. and try them. And as a nullification of Roe Wade and other evil. Yeah, in spite, just like the AHA sanctions. people say, in spite of, ignore yeah. Roe Wade. But unlike the AHA people, we do not say, uh, repeat the, the, the Tory lie, yeah. that, that uh, people do not deserve to be defended with force, okay? Oh, yeah. People have a right, mm -hmm. an unalienable or inalienable, right. or synonyms, yeah. they mean right. the same thing, mm -hmm. right to be defended. That means it comes from God. Not through not a local magistrate, no, 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 no. not through the federal government, not through the U.S. Supreme Court. The right to self-defense, and by extension, the right to defend your innocent neighbor, comes from God. And when AHA says it doesn't, that's a lie. Yeah. Nonetheless, and we can say that, nonetheless, don't inject him with battery acid. Right. Don't do these things. Instead, help us. Help us organize. Mm -hmm. 
to abolish legalized abortion. Mm -hmm. and, and let's do it not cowering, but openly saying that people like Paul Hill, the people like James Cop, are heroes. They're our freedom fighters. Lionize them, mm -hmm. but don't draw and quarter your local abortionist. There you okay? go. Okay? Instead, channel that rage. Fury. That fury. And, and there's a distinction between, you taught me this, Brother Rob, there's a distinction between rage and fury. Fury is a level of anger that resembles insanity. insanity. That's exactly what insanity. God goes through looking at child sacrifice. Now, get your mind around but it that. it is not insanity. No, it's it not. It resembles insanity. insanity. It's not insane. It and resembles. And it reminds me of the, of the <coughs> scripture that says, with the froward, I will show myself froward. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you want to do something as evil and insane mm -hmm. as ripping apart an innocent child and thinking you can get away with it, well, guess what? God is so good, he'll meet you right there. Mm -hmm. These people, at a certain point when we wake up, are going to meet you right there. Mm -hmm. um, there's, And I want to address one, one more thing here. Sure. There, um, Alveda King, and in the past few years, Alveda King, and there's also one of the Down Syndrome activists who spoke before uh, Congress, I think, mm -hmm. Say, you know, against because they're just being genocided, Down yeah, syndrome oh, yeah. people. And Alveda King represents black Americans who are also being genocided, two classes of people being genocided. But both of them gave very similar quotes. And I love these people. I love Alveda King. She's a sweetheart, okay? I've mm -hmm. corresponded with her a little bit over the mm -hmm. years. And also, also love this, haven't met him, but love the Down syndrome man who gave the similar quote. The quote is that I don't want to make abortion uh, illegal. I want to make it unthinkable. And I want to tell you that in reality, that is a pipe dream. That is something that's nice for women. It's nice for, you know, retarded people to say, and I love them, and, I, and I'm furious. I'm furious that they're being genocided. But in reality, until kingdom come, abortion is very thinkable. And what we need is to recriminalize it. Recriminalize it, punish it to the point of deterrence. That's what men have to do. Women aren't qualified to do it. For the most part, retarded people are not qualified to enforce the law. You know, you know, I would say, I would say, deterrence and proportional justice. Deterrence and proportional justice, and even uh, retributive. Yeah. Justice, mm -hmm. even retribution, even retribution. Especially within the context of, of having organized state militias and state defense forces and state police forces to uh, undertake. People, this. we can do it. We can do it, and we can all these things can be in a decent and orderly way. Um, they can be executed after having been tried mm -hmm. for crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. That can happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, why can it, you know, look what the sodomites have done. A tiny minority of the population, but they're focused, they're determined. Okay, they've put us to shame. We can do it. Don't hang yourself. Don't do vigilantism. Don't mm -hmm. uh, burn yourself on a funeral pyre in, in, your, in your rage. Mm -hmm. Instead, direct your righteous indignation and fury mm -hmm. in repentance mm -hmm. and repent with us and let's enforce the law mm -hmm. god will help us mm -hmm. one more thing i forgot uh, don't bury your local abortionist in an ant heap with honey on his face okay. all right whether it's fire ants or what was the other bullet guy? ants bullet ants you know, yeah yeah don't forget about the species of ants yeah, yeah. don't do it don't do it don't do yeah. it you know and like rob said earlier the genocide of the 65 million people plus domestically here now and, 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 the, and the terrible deficit of retributive justice. There's no justice. There's no reckoning. It can make the cathartic benefit of doing some of these things that we're telling you not to do, um, you know, almost indescribable because of the guilt that we all that we all bear for having failed to defend our neighbor. That's why people are denying that it's our responsibility because the people at AHA and other people who are denying that people have the right to self-defense, they can't handle the pain and the mental anguish of, of recognizing the failure that we're admired in. Because if it's true that the pre-born deserve the same defense as the born, then we're admired in, 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 a, in a colossal, I mean, like a Noah's flood of failure, right, that we're drowning in. I'm telling you that's the reality, and the blood of Christ and repentance is what gets us out of it. And if we will repent and confess the truth, despite the horrific nature, the horror of our predicament, trusting in the blood of Christ and realizing we've messed up big, about as big time as anybody can mess up, and as about as big time as any generation of Christians have. But if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just 
to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can speak the truth instead of this cowardly lie that they don't deserve, that you know, you've got to go through the lesser magistrate. No, people, innocent people deserve to be defended. Yeah. Thank you. Dwell on the earth.